Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is John Gluckman, the CEO of Sixth Wave Innovations. How are you doing today, John? Fantastic. Nice to meet you, and thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Very excited to have you on the show. And we'll get started off with a few questions for you. Sixth Wave is a nanotechnology company that utilizes patented molecular imprinted polymers for imprinting, capturing, and releasing substances at the molecular level. Can you tell us a little bit more about your company? <laughs> sure, I will. And for now on, we're gonna call it MIPS because otherwise I get tongue tied with it. <laughs> okay, great. So just briefly, I'll give you the best uh, explanation I can give for, for the lay person on what a MIP is. So great. if you think about taking a piece of, uh, of soft clay and, and pushing your thumb into it, pull your thumb out and you've created an imprint now in the piece of clay. And that imprint has the shape of your thumb, it has the size of your thumb, and it has some unique identifiers of your thumb, which are your fingerprints, and they only match you. Well, almost all molecules in the world have very similar properties. They have a unique size and they have a unique shape, and they, other, and they have other unique things like uh, electrical forces or chemical forces, so they have binding sites and that kind of stuff. What we do is we actually design polymer so that we, when we make the polymer, it forms around our thumb. Wow. And it takes advantage of then the unique size and shape of our thumb. And we can build in properties to the polymer so that we can make that attractive force. Think of it like a magnet. We put a magnet in there and it wants to attract different molecules, but only your thumb fits in. <clears throat> so we do that in polymer. We take a very aggressive approach of, uh, of patenting those, uh, those inventions. We try and patent that very widely and we've been issued patents and we have many more patent pendings and new disclosures going on all the time. And, and that helps not only protect it, but, but build, uh, you know, build value in the company, lasting value in the company. Okay, great. Six Wave has the ability to disrupt several industries across the map. Can you tell us a little bit more about your technology and why it's primed for success? <laughs> sure. So, you know, Six Wave is, is sort of what we all consider the, the next or the existing wave of technologies in general. And so we're <clears throat> taking advantage of being able to do these molecular engineering things for industries that uh, have uh, antiquated systems. They're either less efficient or they're more expensive or they're not environmentally friendly. And so we try and identify markets like that where we can provide a significant benefit to the customer, meaning we can make them more money. And we figure if they're making a lot more money, we can make a lot of money too. And those are good markets for us. So we're in uh, essentially two general sectors, but maybe three, depending on how you want to think about it. The first is our mining sector. We have a fully developed mining polymer where we've created a MIP specifically for gold and silver mining. And we're in the development of other ones for lithium and, and other mining applications. But in gold and silver, we've again imprinted for gold and silver ions. And this provides a much more efficient pathway for a gold mining company to uh, get their gold back into a solid dore. It's uh, faster, less expensive, less capital expenditures, less carbon footprint, um, and uh, you know, generally a cleaner, less, less byproducts and chemicals than, uh, than their current processes. And it makes them an extra $100, $150 per ounce of gold. 
that they're mining. So a fantastic value to them and a, a good recurring revenue model for us. So uh, once we get a mine, uh, they're likely to continue to use us for the life of mine, which could be anywhere from you know, 10 to 20 years plus, depending on the, on the different mine. The other uh, main sector I like to think of it as one is sort of health and wellness. And that includes what we're doing with the affinity systems for purification of cannabinoids right now. And uh, what we're doing in the virus detection, I'll talk about that in a minute. So in cannabinoids, it's a very similar situation to the mining situation, actually. So, you know, most cannabis companies, they start out, uh, they get some green material, they, did, they do an extract, they get this gooey, horrible extract that's got fats and plant material and all sorts of stuff in it. And then they have to purify it to get to a distillate, which is ultimately one of the large products that's sold. It goes into tinctures and butters and, and edibles and all of those things. Well, they use a fairly complicated process. It can take winterization, which is a 12 to 20 hour process, and sequential distillation, with heating and cooling and evaporation and vacuum pumps, and then they get to a distillate. And during that process, they can lose quite a bit of the cannabinoids during that process. And it's fairly expensive. Well, what we've done is we've created a MIP <laughs> that's imprinted for the cannabinoids. And so we've done away with uh, having to do winterization. We can do a simple filtration. We pass then the, the liquefied version of the, of the cannabinoids uh, through our molecular imprinted beads. They collect the cannabinoids only. Everything else is left into a waste stream or it can be cycled for recovery of other molecules if the licensed producer is interested in that. And then we simply remove the cannabinoids using ethanol and they get a high purity ethanol without any of that. There's no heating, there's no vacuum pumps, there's no complexity, there's no way to destroy the product during the process. And so we've reduced the amount of time, we've reduced the electricity, we've reduced the expertise required. We give them more of the cannabinoids they started with back so they get a better yield and they're getting a higher purity distillate than they would using conventional processes. So what does that mean? It means they can make a lot more money. And again, it's a recurring revenue product for us. So as long as they're producing, we're making money. And uh, even with, with that expense, we're still saving them money and giving them a more marketable product. So, you know, really a, a fantastic boon for the industry and a, and a real material shift in, in how, um, how uh, licensed producers are gonna be able to, uh, to make, make ends meet in some cases. And then of course, you know, COVID came and uh, while well, <laughs> well, we had looked at viruses and other, uh, other biological uh, molecules like, um, um, uh, so you've got viruses and you've got other, you know, uh, peptides and biomarkers in the blood. Um, we realized back uh, uh, some time ago that we could capture viruses. Viruses are really just very large molecules. And so uh, we have now successfully developed a molecular imprint or a MIT that captures the COVID-19 virus. And, and so far it's captured all of the variants uh, that we've been able to get access to. And so we're on a very fast track to uh, try and get to a first uh, prototype product that we can start submitting for, uh, for additional testing and outside testing in the next three or four months for a COVID test. Um, and uh, we're really, really excited about this, not just because, uh, you know, uh, vaccines are going to do away with testing, because I don't think that's really going to happen. It, it, if it happens here in North America, it's a long way off in a lot of the rest of the world. But now that we've proven that we can do this, we can adapt all of the manufacturing processes that we've developed to date for that to just start imprinting for different viruses. So we could have a rapid test that would be a home test for influenza for next year that would differentiate between influenza and COVID. One's gonna kill you and one probably isn't. Uh, so, you know, those are important. We could do it for neurovirus on a continuing basis. We know that that's been an, an industry issue 
uh, for uh, for the cruise industry, for example. So there, there are lots of pathways to go once we have this platform. And we've had interest uh, anywhere from uh, from military in the United States uh, looking for us to uh, to detect uh, viruses that might be present in blood samples so that they can uh, do uh, mobile transfusion uh, testing for blood before uh, before collection can be done for things like HIV and, and, and things like that. So uh, there's quite a bit of, uh, of pathway forward, even if COVID, you know, seems to recede at some point. So we're extremely interested in that. And of course, you know, now that, <laughs> now that we've done that, there, there are many, many, many more markets for us. Uh, and uh, it's all the same core technology. So we're, we're really a great technology company with lots of ways to monetize this. Fantastic. Now, I know you guys are gearing up for commercialization of your technology. Can you tell us why now is the perfect time to introduce your products to the market? <laughs> sure. So our most mature product in terms of market introduction and, and field testing and, and adoption really is our mining product, our Exos product. We've been working with a number of uh, top 10 mining companies and they're moving through the pathways toward adoption with them. And we've already uh, taken that product up to full-scale manufacturing with one of our partners in the United States. So that's moving along well. Interestingly, um, you know, that's a double-edged sword, right? So when gold prices are low, uh, gold mines are looking to try and cut costs. So giving them more gold for what they're mining is always good and increases the bottom line directly. Uh, when gold prices are high, um, it gives them an opportunity to make new capital investments. And so that's good for us also, but it also opens up a whole new set of mine or properties that may have been marginal at $1,100, $1 an ounce, but are now clearly in the money at $1,500 to $1,800 an ounce. And so we've seen an explosion of interest in our technology for mine reclamation and, um, uh, and tailings reprocessing projects, as well as uh, new greenfield projects that are accelerating. So this is a really good time in that sector. Of course, you know, the cannabis sector is, is I think, still well known as a growth sector. Uh, we've seen uh, tremendous strides in the United States to open up the, the, the cannabis sector tremendously. I think that that's going to continue. Every signs are that the politics are moving to more national uh, legalization in the United States. And so, you know, even with the recent uh, states that, that legalized uh, in November of last year, you know, those, those states are going to start implementing their programs and, and offering licenses. And so there'll be new builds of LPs starting next year, which is right in line with where we're going to start having the release of our affinity product. So we're, uh, we're planning to get that out and, and be in the beginnings of revenue generation with that, uh, hopefully before the end of this year and accelerating that tremendously through next year. We have a, a huge book of interest. Uh, we have <laughs> new LPs contacting us every day and uh, literally, and we see that accelerating. So we're real excited, not just to have the partners we have now, but uh, seeing some of the majors coming to us as well. That, that goes right into my next question. So Sixth Wave has already received a ton of inquiries about its affinity system from licensed cannabis producers, which you touched on. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why the system is so appealing to cannabis companies across the globe? Yeah, so, you know, the current process is kind of cumbersome. Uh, if you follow historically, you know, what, what people did was they adapted all these scientific equipment that was in the lab to figure out how to do cannabis processing as it really, you know, exploded into a commercial industry. And um, it's not simple and it's time consuming and it's a lot of batch processes that weren't really uh, designed to do this. They were designed to do other things. Chromatography, for example, is used for separating cannabinoids. And my goodness, I mean, that's you know, million dollar equipment and it's slow and it's expensive to replace the media. And, you know, you gotta have a master's degree to operate the stuff properly sometimes. So, <clears throat> you know, this is an advancement that takes away that complexity. So if you think about the process, uh, a licensed producer can lose between 20 and 40% of the cannabinoids going from that raw extract to a distillate because those processes weren't optimized for doing that extraction. 
we don't lose any. <laughs> so that's a, tr you know, right there, that's a tremendous savings for them. If you're thinking about 40% on a thousand dollar a kilo kind of distillate, that's $400 additional into the pocket. So it's not hard once you start showing them that the system works this way. It's not hard to show them that, hey, you know, if you're chasing CBD to the commodity level and to the bottom, every penny you can save, every piece of increased um, uh, output that you can get from your harvest means dollars almost to the bottom line because the margins are getting thinner and thinner. Not only can we do that, but we can do it faster and more efficiently. We can do it at less expense. So we're saving them on operating expenses as well. And so what's to lose? Love it. In the health and wellness, you know, um, I see uh, things like uh, hallucinogenics are showing increasingly more medical evidence for their use in treatment of PTSD, atypical depression and other things. I think microdosing along with uh, coordinated uh, therapy and, and the use of, uh, of, of, of these kinds of psychotropic medicines is going to increase. For us, it's, it's just affinity with a different bead in terms of what the purification requirements for any of those biologically derived uh, hallucinogenics are. So I see that as being a, a very popular growth market. Of course, we're seeing more IPOs in that and RTOs on the, on the market and public companies focusing in on that. So that certainly is one that we're looking out at. Um, and, and really, I think, you know, in the, in the virus and other biological threat entities, um, you know, really we, we could, we, we have a whole, whole company in in terms of the different kinds of applications, the different viruses, the different form factors that a test might take. And so licensing opportunities abound there. It certainly isn't something that I would suggest Sixth Wave is gonna be the best or most efficient in taking the market for all those things. But, you know, look, put it in a, put it in a mask. You know, we all know that there are hundreds of millions of those being sold. So, you know, might as well team up with a mask manufacturer. Wow, sounds like you guys got your hands involved in so many things, super exciting. Our shareholders will be watching this video from all over the world and they're gonna have questions for you. They're gonna be interested in learning more. What's the best way for them to get in contact with you, John? Um, you know, the, uh, we have uh, on our websites uh, info and uh, sign up for our newsletters and ask questions directly there. Uh, they can reach out to the corporate offices. I suggest that they try and reach uh, Mark McDonald here first. Uh, he, not that he screens all my calls, but uh, my time is uh, generally taken up trying to manage uh, the technology and what we're doing. And so he helps make sure that things get on my schedule. And uh, right. of course, there are people like you, which uh, we hope will continue to find the, the, the story interesting and follow us and uh, you can help point them in directions. We try and put a lot of stuff up on our websites and videos and how to's and uh, you know simple explanations. So there are a lot of resources there, not just for our customers, but for investors to you know, kind of get an understanding of what we can do and think about their own problems. I, I can tell you that it is not infrequent that a prospective investor or an investor sends us a letter and says, can you use this for this? And I've got some connections in, in this industry. And a lot of our, actually a lot of our gold mining leads uh, come to us that way as well. So we, we encourage the interactions and look forward to it. Fantastic. Well, we here do interview a lot of mining companies and cannabis companies and COVID-19 related companies. So maybe we can make some introductions as well. And thank you for joining us, the CEO of Sixth Wave Innovations, John Gluckman. Thank you for your time today, John. Thank you. I appreciate your time too. Always a pleasure. Now, remember guys, Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here in Rich TV Live. Consult a financial advisor. If you like the video, please smash the like button, share the video everywhere, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you get updates Every single time we bring a new CEO interview, an overview, or breaking news, you'll get access first. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring in the winners, and we bring them to you first. I don't see anyone else talking about Six Wave Innovations yet. 
I believe this is just the beginning. Put them on your radar, put them in your watch list. I think they're undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Thank you for your time, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.